In this third mini lecture, we will introduce uh, stability derivatives and their non dimensionalization, especially how to choose their denominator. Well, we first need to understand what is stability derivatives in flight dynamics analysis. And we already know derivatives are rates of change of a parameter with respect to a specific variable. And now, for example, the rate of change of a velocity with respect to time, and this item can be expressed as partial u, partial t. And okay, and in flight dynamics, for example, the rate of change of a force with respect to a linear velocity. And this one can be expressed as partial x, partial v. Or we can write it as capital X, v. In here, v shows up as a subscript. So in this way, uh, we define the stability derivatives in flight dynamics as uh, either a force or moment change with respect to linear velocity or angular velocity. Okay, now we have the question, how many stability derivatives need to be considered in flight dynamics? In order to answer the previous question, we made a table in here. And in the first uh, row, we have x, y, z, they are the forces. And then we have L, M, N, these are the moments. And in the first column, we have u, v, w, and the linear velocities. And then specifically, we put w dot there, and that's a vertical velocity acceleration. Following that, we have p, q, r, the angular velocities, and then we have delta a, delta e, delta r. Those are the deflection angles. Right, okay. And it's very easy to understand. And each cross-sectional cross point, um, we, we define uh, stability derivatives. Now we can review this table. And well, you may notice somewhere there are crosses and somewhere there are zeros. And what does the cross or zero mean? So cross means cross derivative, and it's usually zero for symmetrical aircraft, which is a conventional aircraft. And zero means they are negligible values for conventional aircraft. And let's see an example. For example, um, y u, the cross point of y and u, which means we have a stability derivative called partial y, partial u. We know u is in the x direction and y is in the y direction, y force in the y direction. So they are perpendicular to each other, the vectors, and then they are zero. And for the cross derivative, it's also possible they are um, parallel to each other. For example, L u, partial L, partial u, and they are in the same direction, right? So all following the um, x direction. And for zero, for example, and we can choose one as example. For example, uh, x and q. We know x is uh, force pointing uh, along the x-axis, and a q is the angular velocity along y-axis, which is a pitching angular rate. And because the pitching angular rate change won't give any significant change in x, so it becomes negligible. That's why I put a zero in, the, uh, in here. OK, so you can explore this table and try to attach your explanations to either x or zero. We already know there are quite a few stability derivatives similar as uh, the earlier lecture we need to know how to make the stability derivatives non-dimensional, uh, which means the key point is to figure out the denominator. Okay, so in, in order to help us 
uh, get familiar with uh, stability derivatives, I still attach the table in here. Okay, so let's see. Here is an example. The derivative of a force with respect to a linear velocity. Uh, showing here is partial x, partial v. This is uh, uh, stability derivative. And now we will use this as an example uh, to show how to um, figure out the denominator to make it non-dimensional. Okay, so because x is a force, we know in the uh, non-dimensional uh, lift coefficient or drag coefficient, we're the denominator is uh, half rho v squared times s. So this part, this coefficient has the dimension of a force. For linear velocity v, and we know it, it's quite straightforward, it's v. The denominator is just a big v, true air speed. Okay, so we just divide these two parts. So we have half rho v s. So partial x partial v the denominator is half rho v s so this is a way how to find out the denominator for a specific um, stability derivatives okay so in order to help us to uh, to understand the process i made a, a small table in here so for example, the first column is force half, and the denominator is half rho v squared times s. And then we have moment, and we've, we know from the moment coefficient, the denominator is half rho v squared times s. And if it's longitudinal moment, we need to times c bar, which is a mean air dynamic chord. If it is the lateral directional moment, and we will times b, so that's the difference. We, we, we need to remember here is a, a recap of what happened. So force in a moment usually appear uh, in a numerator, and then the linear velocity or angular velocity of, of, often appear in a denominator. Okay, so for linear velocity, it's quite straightforward. We have V. For angular velocity, we already know from earlier. Um, we usually use V divided by either C bar or B um, for non-dimensionalization. And why we use, sometimes use C bar, why we use B, we need to distinguish. And now we should be able to explain. Okay, knowing this table, and actually it's not very hard to remember once we know why it is like this. Yeah. Um, okay, so we can see another example, for example, um, partial n partial r. And we just look up the table in here because n is a moment and it's a yawing moment, so it's a lateral directional and we can choose half rho v square times b times s and then r is the angular rate and it's also lateral directional so uh, we choose b divide uh, v divided by b so eventually we have half rho v s b square okay making use of the table in the previous slide we can do some summary and um, so if in the longitudinal direction, um, we can summarize um, the derivative of force with respect to linear velocity, the de denominator is like this, half rho v s, and then derivative of force with respect to angular velocity, so we have the denominator, and moment with respect to linear velocity and a moment with respect to angular velocity. I don't know whether you uh, you find there is a W dot, which is a vertical velocity ac acceleration. So why it has the same denominator as the angular velocity? So this is, in, I highlighted in here and 
the question is can you validate this this is a homework for you to do okay so this is for longitudinal direction and pay attention to the uh, characteristic lens is always C bar so if you find something uh, in the longitudinal direction any derivative in the longitudinal direction you are, you should be able to find the denominator to make it non-dimensional and we will frequently use this later okay so this is for longitudinal direction and similarly we have the lateral direction table and I'm not repeating it and you can just read it read through and I want to specify as in here in the lateral directional um, derivatives you can always see and B without seeing any C bar right because B belongs to the lateral directional and it's a characteristic lens in that motion okay so at the beginning in the big table defining the stability derivatives and we know in the uh, lower part we have deflection angles and also there is a force change with respect to deflection angles and a moment change with respect to deflection angles so how can we uh, make this type of derivatives non-dimensional that's a question okay so again I'm pasting the table in here and I will see this table okay and now I'm, I need to add one extra column which is a deflection angle remember uh, in this uh, flight dynamics the deflection angle is always measured in radian instead of degree so if it's in radian the dimension is actually one so this makes uh, a task much easier so if it's one we just keep it as as it is so in the longitudinal direction for example moment derivative of moment with respect to deflection angle is just uh, the denominator is just uh, um, the denominator we use for moment because the deflection angle has a unit or dimension of one okay and similarly for lateral directional derivative of moment with respect direction angle and we just replace a characteristic lens by B okay and finally uh, I will I gathered everything up here and organizing to this table and this table is what you are usually seeing the exam paper so at here we need to uh, finish this mini lecture and, it and this lecture will be followed by a few examples this is the final slide of this mini lecture and I highlighted a few um, stability derivatives and the there are uh, red ones and also yellow ones the red ones are the uh, lateral directional derivatives we need to look at in detail and I also derive them later and the yellow ones uh, belongs to the lo longitudinal motions and also we will put a lot of efforts in there and see how to derive them get some e relations for it and uh, we can quickly estimate its magnitude okay so this is what we have for the stability derivatives and uh, and how to find their denominator to make them non-dimensional